Hey everybody, welcome back. This is part 12 of the processing tutorial. In the last lesson, what we did was we, we introduced the mouse, we learned how to, how to use mouse pressed, which we're still using. We learned how to use mouse clicked, uh, dragged, and moved, and we saw that we could use these variables mouse x and mouse y, which are built into processing in order to tell us where the mouse is on the screen. Now, if you remember, the objective is to be able to click on a ball and be able to make it disappear. And what we did, we did, we did that last lesson, but we only had one ball and the ball's not moving anywhere. So if you click on this, it goes away. So that works just fine. But in our game, we're going to have lots of balls and they're all going to be moving. So what we're going to do here is we're going to use what we have so far and we're going to add some more balls and we're going to use an array. Uh, then we're going to make the balls disappear however we want. Now, if you don't remember what this is here, this distance formula, uh, take a look at the supplementary material in lesson 11 and kind of go over the distance formula until you understand what this is doing. It is geometry. Uh, I understand some people might be taking this that never have taken geometry, and that's okay. You can just copy the copy it and and hopefully just follow along. If you want to take a look, go look at the supplementary material and teach yourself what it what it actually means. Okay, uh, so we use this distance formula and it just tells us the distance from the center of the circle to where we clicked. And since the, the ellipse, the circle is the ball, is, has a 20 pixel diameter, if the distance is within 10, the radius is half the, half the diameter from the center to the outside of the ball. If that is less than 10, the distance, that means we've clicked inside the ball. So this measures where we clicked how far it is from the center of this one ball up here. Now, we want to check our click against many, many, many balls to see if we've clicked inside of it. So I'm gonna extend this example and we're gonna use our arrays that we've learned about. So I'm gonna create an array of X values and I'm gonna create a, an array of Y values. And I'm gonna make them this. I, I think you just need to follow along exactly what I'm doing here. Don't try to put them in your own place because I'm giving them these values for a reason. Okay, so now I have three X's and three Y's, which means I have three pairs for three balls. And that means I'm going to have to come down here and change all of these X's into uh, ar arrays being accessed because I can no longer access x as it as it is i need to actually access an element of x and i'm going to use just hard-coded values here for these and throw this in here for xi and oops i don't know why that did that all right there we go and I'm gonna have to do the same thing for here. So I'm just gonna copy this line because I'm gonna use the same. I'm gonna highlight that and indent. All right, good. Oh, I need to actually indent that and create the end of my for loop. Okay, so what this is here, and before I put these values in, I'll tell you what I'm doing here. This is just gonna loop through and draw. You should be familiar with that. That just draws all of these three ellipses. But when I press the mouse, I need to check where I clicked against all three of these balls. So I need to check this one, this one, and this one. And I need to know if any of those distances are less than 10. If any of those distances are less than 10, I need to delete that ball or actually move it off the screen. So I still need to access each one of these individually. So I'm accessing the index zero first and then one and then two. Okay. And what this will do is it just loops through and it does this distance formula and calculates it for each one, checks if it's less than 10. If it is, it will then remove the, the ball or move the ball at the index I outside of the screen so we can't see it. Uh, what am I oh, missing a comma there? All right, and off we go. All right, so notice I have, I've purposely done this because I have a ball on top of a ball, and I'll tell you why in just a minute. Uh, let's go ahead and m remove these. So I click here, that one's gone. Now I'm gonna click on the right edge, that one's gone, and then click on that one. So they're all gone. 
So it works, right? This is perfect. We can transfer it over. Well, not quite, because you're going to find that there are two small problems with this. The first problem is this. If I click, if I have two balls on top of each other, and you could imagine there would be many times in the program if you have lots of balls going around the screen where two balls might be on top of each other as they're flying across. If I click here, right here on these two, it's going to delete both of those balls at the same time. But that's incorrect. We only really want the ball on the top to be, to be removed. So if I only want one ball to be removed, I'm going to have to introduce something a little bit new, and it's going to have to be in here. What I want is a way for when this for loop, I, don't, I want to exit the for loop. When this for loop reaches in here, some conclusion that yes, a, di a ball is within distance of my click, so let's go ahead and move it. I want to then stop the for loop because I've already found one ball. What this is doing here is it loops through and it finds my first ball, which is this one, okay, right? It's going to be this one right here. And then it finds this other ball also is it within distance. So it loops through and it finds one and moves it. And it keeps looping and it finds the other and it moves it. So that's why it does this. And I don't want that. So let's let's see if we can fix it. We're going to do in here if if we find a ball, we're going to use this statement break. Now break is a is a special statement that says if you're in a loop or or something like that, it will break out of that loop and just end. Okay? And in the old time programming, this was actually done with something called a go to. And essentially, a break is kind of like a go to. It just it's a go to the end of the loop and finish the loop. Alternatively, you could do it like this. You could just say i is equal to three, and if i is equal to three, then the loop also ends. But I find that's not the best practice. We're going to use break, and the reason is is because if I change the loop size to maybe be ten instead of three, then I also have to come down here and say, well, now make i equal to ten, and the break just means we don't ever have to do that. All right, so let's check it out. If I click here again, you notice now it does only delete one ball, but unfortunately it deletes the bottom ball. So why does it delete the bottom ball and not the top ball? Right, let me show you that one more time. So see this top ball here, I click and the bottom one is gone. Well, that comes back to our draw order, and it's the way that we draw these ellipses. And because this loop and this loop are both starting at index 0, it draws all the, the, the ellipses from index 0 up to index 2. So the, the ones at index 1 and 2 are going to be drawn on top of the index 0. And if something at index 1 would be drawn under index 2, so the higher the index, the higher it's drawn up, meaning it's drawn on top of everything below it. And when we check here, it's actually checking all of the all of the ellipses from the bottom up to the top. So if I, if I had five balls stacked on top of each other, it would delete the last ball, the bottom ball first, and we wouldn't actually see it disappear. So let's uh, let's let's test that theory. And I'm going to put uh, 102, 104. And let's put them all like this. So what we should see are these, you know, we have three balls here. Ah, let me space it out a little bit more. Maybe let's make it 5, 10, and 15. That should do it. All right, so if I click here, it'll delete the very bottom ball. I click again, it deletes the next ball. And then I click here, and it deletes the last ball. So that's not what we, what we really want. We want it to be reversed. So how could we reverse that? Well, there's two very easy ways to do it. And the first way is just change the draw loop. Instead of drawing the index 0 first, we draw the index 2 first and work our way down. Alternatively, we can come to mouse pressed, and we can switch that one around too. So instead of trying to detect the last ball, or the first ball rather, the index 0 ball first, we detect the index 2 ball first. So what I do is this. I change this to 2, 
and instead I say while well, this is greater than or equal to zero and instead of doing plus plus I just do minus minus so we haven't seen this yet but I minus minus is really it's the same thing I same idea as plus plus it just subtracts one each time and some people will do this some people will do it the other way I there's some benefit I'm not exactly sure I'll, I'll put something in the supplementary material because I'm actually curious now and I, I want to look it up uh, so here we go we've got this and it's now going to count from two and it's going to count down until it gets to zero so it'll do index two then index one then index zero so if we run this and now I have the same code and I try to click on the top one it deletes the top one then it deletes the next one and then it deletes the last one so we fix the two problems we fix the problem of it not clicking the top ball and it, we fix the problem of it erasing more than one ball so perfect right all right so all we need to do really to get this program working now is to take what we've learned here and put it back into our, our other code so let's go ahead and take this entire function here or take this entire thing and I'm gonna copy it and we're gonna go back to this program and I'm just gonna put this here at the end alright so the only thing we really need to change in here is the size of our loop and the loop should start at the number of balls minus one and it will just l increment all the way back down to zero now why did I do number of balls minus one and not number of balls well if you remember we said number of balls is 50 but the array will only have an index the highest index will be 49 so if I have 50 minus 1 then I start at index 49 instead of index 50 which doesn't even exist alright so now this should work just fine as is we shouldn't have to change really anything else we're still using X and Y over here and I used X and Y in here and there's no extra variables I need so I'm gonna lower this a little bit maybe to 10 balls so we can actually see that things are disappearing and let's run our run our code here alright alright look there they go and see if I can get oh, that one's not there we go and do there go away there all right so balls are moving everything seems to be clicking and working out pretty well there's a little bit it's not quite the best the best clicking at the moment it's not it's not clicking very smoothly but that's all right we will try to fix that in the next lesson uh so what we've done this time is we got our mouse working so we can actually click and delete the balls and all we had to do was copy this function over from this code and if you want to see this code or this code uh, you can check that out on the website in the supplementary materials alright so thanks for watching and in the next lesson what we're gonna do is we're gonna learn how to add text and keep score so you can actually click the balls and see the time go up and different things like that. So we're getting close to actually making a, a small little game. Uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you in lesson 13.